Good evening, everyone. My name is Annelise Bungana. I work with the Department of Environmental Affairs um, with Coastal Environmental Research. I will be talking to you about South Africa's coastal water quality. Approximately one third of human population lives on the coastal areas. Coasts are used for transportation of people and for goods. Um, they are used for disposal of uh, effluents, municipal waste, industrial uh, effluents, and they also used for recreation, uh, such as surfing, fishing, and other things. Um, as a result of this, our marine waters uh, suffer from stress events such as human-induced eutrophication, contamination by pollutants, chem uh, by chemical pollutants, by oils, by, by oils, and uh, also by ballast water. Um, South Africa is at the is positioned at the most uh, busy as the, at the busiest area for at, at the busiest um, shipping route. So it is very prone to oil pollution. Um, this data is, uh, is is uh, this is unpublished data by DIA, um, 2011. It is the data. It is data that was collected between 2001 and 2006. According to this data, uh, over 20,000 liters of oils I have been, um, in, in in 2003 have been spilled on the on our marine waters. Um, Another factor that affects our coastal waters is wastewater discharges, as I mentioned before. We have about 75 discharging points in South Africa, uh, from estuaries, offshores, like directly on the offshore, on the surf zone directly, and also some come via streams to the offshore. Another thing is litter. Uh, this data was, co was um, collected by uh, beach cleanup by DIA. It, um, it's also unpublished and it also reveals that um, litter is 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 is, uh, pollu is, pollu is, very, is a very bad pollutant as well. It's led by uh, leads, uh, caps leads and robes and uh, food wrappers. Um, to guide and set goals for our coastal for, for our for, for a clean coastal environment, our constitution provides us with uh, um, provides um, everyone to a clean environment, uh, to an environment that is not harmful, um, and also it also provides measures for ecolo for to, for the prevention of pollution and um, ecological and prevention of ecological degradation, and comes with it other acts like NEMA that give us regulations and measures that um, that are uh, that we use to 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 have our water quality requirements um, heading to the legislation the department of environmental affairs came up with um, it's, it's in a need for national ocean and uh, coastal monitoring program this is due to the fact that south africa does not have a clear picture of our ocean and coastal water status. And um, this National Ocean and Coastal Monitoring Program was launched uh, during PAKISA as Initiative 7. The aim of this, pro of this program is to monitor trends in our coastal waters and also um, identify risks to human health and um, environment as well. The plan of this program is to, is, 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 um, this thing, it, it has been planned that the DIA environmental programs will be trained to collect samples and also um, establish a national pollution lab. Then the samples will be sent to this national pollution lab and then it will process the samples and also to develop ocean and coastal standards for collection and analysis 
of, um, of the samples and also reporting data so that it's available to everyone. Uh, lastly, it is to develop norms and standards to monitor and report water quality status and pollution on our coast. Um, this uh, program will be led by DIA and uh, it, key stakeholders have been identified which is the uh, Department of Water Affairs and Sanitation, DST, SABS, um, DPE, uh, Mineral Resources, Provinces, Metros, and um, munis local municipalities. And as I mentioned before, this program is for, is to, is for to monitor water quality, pollution and water quality. Now, I would like to explain what water quality means. Water quality is a term that is used to that is used to, dis to describe the condition of the water, including chemical, physical, and biological characteristics with respect to particular, to a particular, particular papers. Um, hence, we have guidelines for, maybe um, water quality guidelines for recreational purposes and for uh, ecosystem purposes. The general parameters that are used are the concentration of dissolved oxygen in the water, uh, bacterial levels, salinity, turbidity, algae, alcohol concentration, um, quantity of pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals, and nutrients. But, and then for this program, that's um, this National Oceans and Coastal Mon Monitoring Program, um, parameters that have been selected are microbial and phytoplankton um, indicators and also physical chemical parameters such as nutrients, salinity, temperature, dissolved oxygen, and turbidity. The microbial parameters are used for humans to, to assess human health, to assess water quality for human health. And examples of those microbial indicators is E. coli, Clostridium, and also periphringes. Um, for phytoplankton, examples are dinoflagellates, and diatoms. Now, as I mentioned before, that we have um, this, these, the discharges of waste. They mostly affect the mostly affected part of our coastal area is the surf zone because it is where the discharges enter. It's like there's no uh, dilution of um, of of the nutrients from the outside. So on the surf zone, it is the most suffering part. And then for human health, as I mentioned, on the surf zone, for human health, microbial indicators are used, the E. coli and, peri and periphringes. Uh, for ecosystem health, from the literature that I read, um, phytoplankton diatoms are the, are the best indicators to use. And um, but now diatoms are those. Um, if you if you notice on the sea, there's usually it's usually white like this. There's there's at the edge of the sea there's that uh, whitish form. Then when it's like brownish to like greenish brown, those are diatoms. You see them at the at the thingy at the. Usually you see them um, when 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 the tide is low, then they they on the sediment. Um, the surf dye, there's two types of uh, diatoms. There's those that are benthic on the sediment, and then some of them are, on the, are pelagic. Um, the ones that we find in our coastal areas in, in, on the in South African coast is Anolus, the benthic one, and then the most um, abundant is the, also on, on the pelagic zone is Australiopsis. Uh, Australiopsis. And um, I found that there's, um, they have been studied by uh, Guy, Professor Guy Bates, and, and NMMU has got some studies. Some of them have not been published, and some I've seen on, the, on some literature. Um, these diatoms are very good indicators because they are very sensitive to environmental conditions. Um, to a like to a variety of environmental conditions, especially nutrients, so they would be very good to use uh, to detect nutrient input. They have a sh very short lifespan, so they would be able to 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 detect um, temporal changes, and also 
they would be very good to use um, because they would be the, like the benthic diatoms, um, they would be representative of sampling sites. Um, like I mentioned before, E. coli is the one that is one indicator that is used for human to, to assess water for human health. But it is under investigation because it is used as a proxy to to uh, to to assess whether there's other pathogens uh, that are on the water. So, um, for f my future plans are to evaluate the existing water quality indicators for human for human health and for ecosystem health. But for me, I would um, I would do ecosystem health because I feel. Uh, humans, they, there's always studies that are done for human health rather than ecosystem. Um, for instance, we have guidelines for recreational purposes, guidelines of, uh, of co coastal water quality guidelines for recreational purposes. And um, I would also like to improve on the currently used indicators. Um, Maybe the, the diatoms, for instance, is the one that I've found to be the best indicator. And also make use of PAGISA to achieve appropriate national scale water quality standards. Maybe through my, um, I'm, I'm hoping to do a master's degree on that. And also, lastly, to build capacity in water quality research. Thank you.